Three Lewises. Welcome, welcome. There's three Lewises today joining us. We've got Lewis Figueredo. We've got Lewis. And we have Lewis. So there's three Lewises. Uh, Lewis, please introduce uh, yourself. Hey, I'm Lewis. Uh, what's up, Bobby? And uh, who are the other Lewises, dude? Like, uh, did we get hacked or something? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, this is this is not sponsored by any company and not affiliated with Skybrows by any means. Just to just to make it clear to everyone, our servers are very very secure. They are Siege compliant, maintain chain of custody, and also our AWS Impact Level Two secure. Very Fed Ramp. E. No threats. Zero threats. Zero threats to our servers. Uh, also. What's it called? Drones After Dark tonight. So we got Vic Moss, and we're talking mostly politics. Anything political on your mind? There's a lot of political stuff, right? I think we touch it. We touch on it like almost every episode, but it's pretty exciting to have Vic on because he he kind of he, he sounds like he know you know he actually knows what he's talking about, right? Um, a lot of the stuff that comes out of my end, it's like you know it's anger based, right? Like I'm upset about what these guys are doing. Um, and, you know, I'm just, you know, glad that Vic decided to come on and he can shed some light on all the all the lobbying stuff and, you know, all the AUVSI drama that's going on um, that everybody's talking about. So, yeah, pretty excited for that. Nice, nice. What, what else about is you? Uh, you going on some, with you? Hmm? I was just about to say, you've, uh, you put some uh, Skybrows updates out, right? So, uh, you've been playing around with the Avada, doing some modeling, right? Yeah, have you? I was asking you last week. I yes, I I tried. I haven't uploaded them yet, but you know, I had a busy week, so I have an excuse. Of course, of course, too busy but, for a little old me. No, you know, you know, I'm always here for sky browsing you, Bobby. But no, tell everybody about you know all the stuff that you've been doing this week. Yeah, yeah. We so a lot of our testers have been making 3D models. Some of them are good. Some of them not so much. And I was mostly just focusing on the not so good models to figure out how we can make, you know, our interior mapping a lot better. So did some updates on that. And uh, one of the issues that I noticed was if you if you fly your drone and too much of the ceiling is in the drone video, it will actually think the ceiling is the floor and make your model upside down. So we're gonna add a tool to reorient the model. But I thought, wait a sec, you know what's better? What if we got the exterior of the building? alongside with the interior. I mean, if you get the exterior, it's always going to be, you know, it's always going to be facing the right side up. So we did exactly that. Just, uh, I flew in Nevada. I have the basic motion controller, so it's not the motion controller two where you can like, you know, uh, yaw the drone. So, I mean, we, we learned the drone. We learned about all, we learned about all the differences, right? Between the motion controllers this week. Yes. Shout out to, AI for teaching me on that. So I just used the DJI FPV controller to, to fly the Avada. You know, did like a side scan and then flew directly into the apartment and made a 3D model of the exterior and interior in like two minutes. So it's a, uh, I don't know if it's done, been done before, but it was pretty kick ass being able to do that. No, it was definitely, definitely badass. And, you know, people just, uh, I know you put it out on your um, newsletter. And all the on the, I think you put it on LinkedIn and all the all the Facebook groups. So if, you know, people should definitely go check it out because it's 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 I've never seen it before. So nice. And Lewis is the drone detective. He solves all drone mysteries. Yeah, but you know, there's some 3D uh, you know subject matter experts out there that do 3D mapping. So they might say that it's been done before. Um, that I've seen. No, I don't think it's been done before. So kudos to you, Bobby and Skybrows for always putting out these cool updates and, um, you know, uh, exterior, interior, just everything. Thank you, Lewis. Thank you. Appreciate you. And for all of our uh, listeners out there, uh, so Drones After Dark uh, started off like two years ago, maybe three years ago. And the premise was that we gossiped a bunch at conferences like all the business connections didn't really happen at the conference floor. It was in hotel rooms or casinos afterwards where we got drunk and cursed and, you know, gossiped a bunch. So I turned it into a podcast and now uh, drinking optional, of course, uh, crack open a beer or drink of your choice uh, and uh, gossip with us. So you don't have to drink. It's optional, but you do have to curse with us. And 
today we have none other than DSPA's Vic Moss. What do you know about Vic we Moss? We sure do. I, listen, when it comes to you know all the rules and regulations and all that stuff, Vic's the man. Um, if you're on all the all the drone groups out there, you'll see that the minute that somebody posts a question about regulations and has some concern, Vic is always there to respond. So I think he's just a trusted person. And um, and I can't wait to get into all this drama with him in a little bit about, you know, all the current legislation going on. And uh, we should ask, you know, if people are, I don't know how many people are viewing right now, but definitely, you know, interact in the comments. Um, and, um, you know, you'll let us know what they're saying, Bobby, in case they have any questions. And yeah, super excited. Yeah, great, great. So I'll actually... Uh, hmm. Send you the comments right there. That's the producer view. Should have sent it a little earlier, but we're chatting for a little bit. But in the meantime, we have none else than the one and only Mr. Drone, a drone legend, a nationally subject, nationally recognized subject matter expert on U.S. drone regulations and compliance. He is the CEO of DSPA, Drone Service Providers Alliance, and a very, very good photographer. Joining us today, yeah, we that's have right. Vic Moss. <laughs> he knows about photography, right? A little bit? Yeah. I know a little about it, yeah. <laughs> Got to pay the bills somehow. <laughs> it's a little late, but... <laughs> oh, my God. Had to toss in the sound, effect, sound effects. You see, now they work. Ah, I'm frozen. It's, it didn't oh, work for the go. first few episodes, but now it's good. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Oh, nice! It's, Hello. <laughs> it's not drones after dark without technical issues. There it is. Of course, without technical. Doing, okay, everybody's moving on my screen. Is everybody moving on your screen? E, you're a little. Yeah. You're. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Good. 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 I needed a haircut. I should have gotten a haircut for today. <laughs> oh well. Thick moss, so yeah, yeah. This will this will be fun. This will be fun. Yeah, um, yeah, looks great. A uh, bunch of people in the comments. Nick Osgood, shout out to Nick hey, from Nick. Uh, Zeitview, previously drone base. Um, we Jen Big <laughs> says it's not live on YouTube. It is live on YouTube. I have it on my ne other screen. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't. Get yeah, it. it is. It definitely is live on YouTube. Oh, I didn't click on the go live button. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Vic, what you drinking today? Voodoo Ranger. Nice. Voodoo Ranger. I used to drink. I used to drink Fat Tire, and I don't drink much anyway, so this is kind of rare for me. Um, but I used to drink Fat Tire, and they changed the recipe. So, really? so Vic, you're, are you using us as an excuse to have a beer? Is that what yeah? You just why said? not? Why not? My wife's out of town, so. <laughs> what are you drinking, nice. Bobby? <laughs> I've got Topo Chico, of course. Extra spicy seltzer, and I've got vodka right here. Vodka. Ooh. Nice. No, I'm a beer guy. I'm, I'm joking. It's just water. I don't drink. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I used to make my own beer. I don't know if you knew that or not. I loved it. I used to make really? some really good I... beer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, we had to. I've always, uh... I... Go ahead. I, I've always wanted to. Um... Growing up, I always made wine with my dad, so that's something that we always did as a family. Um, but I've always wanted to try beer. I just haven't come around to it. It's a lot of fun. I had to quit making it because my last batch was when my wife was pregnant with my daughter. Um, and she's 25 now, so it's been a while. Uh, wow. And she came home when I was cooking wort. And you know how the hormones get all wackadoodle during pregnancy? Um, she got violently ill. And so she can't wow. be around cooking wort anymore. So bye-bye all my drone stuff. Or all my drone stuff. No, all my beer stuff. Sorry. <laughs> no, not the drone stuff. Not the drone stuff. No, no, no. Got it. Pretty neat. Um, yeah. I know flat, fat tire used to have, uh, I'm pretty sure it was fat tire. They used to have this like black pepper lime beer and it was really good. Hmm. hmm. No, I lied. That's New Belgium. Okay. Well, New Belgium That's makes not... fat tire. Oh. They're a Fort Collins then, yeah. brewery, or were before they were bought by Anbev about five, six years ago. I see. I see. Hmm. hmm. 
So beer after dark instead of drones after dark, huh? I think I'm on Ken Dono's right. show or something. Oh. Well, we thought we thought it was we thought it was a dad episode, right, Vic? Dad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you tagged Drones everything, dad. dad. And I thought you guys were making fun of my age. <laughs> no, I thought the same thing in the beginning. Like last year when I first came on, I'm like, I'm like, dad, what is this about? Because I'm a dad and now I'm at the drone show. I don't know. Thanks. Bobby didn't do a good job explaining things. I that's, 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 that I makes it more free fun. flowing. It's fun. What's the uh, what do the other two Lewises think? Because uh, apparently they can't get booted out of this podcast. I don't think they're showing though. So no, they're not showing. I just saw three. Good. Yeah, there's All only right. three. I think on my screen I see another Lewis, but on the live there's only three. So we're good. Okay. All good. All good. So we already have comments. Let's jump right on in. Uh-oh. Kyle Norfers. Kyle Norfers from uh, Hello, Weber Kyle. County Search and Rescue. How you doing, Kyle? He says he needs you in Utah, Vic. SB Senate Bill <laughs> one thirty five just passed the Senate and is oh, headed shit. towards the I mean, house. Darn. Nice. Get the piss word out of the way. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, That's that was kind of stuck in there at the bottom of that bill, like the last two paragraphs, maybe not even two paragraphs, uh, kind of snuck in and tacked on there at the end. Um, it's it's another Chinese drone ban, basically. DJI drone ban. Let's just let's call it what it is. Um, and we don't know what to do about those. We're trying real hard at DAA, the Drone uh, Advocacy Alliance. But um, I know, uh, uh, Kyle, they were trying to reach out with you. Hopefully they did. Um, I can try there. Um, I'm only seven hours away. I'm in Denver. So, yeah. Sorry, my, my wife friend, just uh, texted me. My friend Josh uh, from Salt Lake City PD was at the state Senate committee last Friday and, or, or, two Fridays ago. And Mm -hmm. he was saying that um, he's he's not sure if it's online, but basically he had a meeting with all the chiefs and all the sheriffs around the state. And just, he, he told them in public safety terms, why that would be bad for public safety. They all Mm -hmm. agreed. And uh, all the chiefs and sheriffs were going to uh, more or less convince the senators not to vote on it, but. And that didn't work. Unfortunately. Yeah. Just like DeSantis in Florida. For a while, I I only did it once and I took it down because I didn't want to get in trouble. But I had uh, I have a Twitter account that I use like twice so far since I've had it. Um, I had hashtag DeSantis kills lost children. So maybe we need to go ahead and put that into. <laughs> <What>? um, <laughs> you, know, you, you know, you can't have the hotel, you can't have the DGI up to find a lost kid. So you're gonna kill it. I ha- I had a. It's a little rough. Too. I had a hashtag too at the time. It was called don't don't Florida my New Jersey. There I think you that's go. That's what the hashtag was. But. What do you, Vic? What do you think should happen, like in a situation like that? Like, let's say, uh, you know, public safety agency finds out that their state they're moving to pass a bill. Mm-hmm. You know, we thought that there was, you know, people out there like ABSI that were advocating for us and helping us and stuff like that. But now we come to find out they're not. So, wh- what sh- what should you know, the end user? You know, what should we do? Like, what's the best way to? Is it? Gosh. How should we organize? Um, first of all, look at droneadvocacyalliance dot uh, com. Um, join that because we are working really hard to try and get some of that stuff out. Um, and that's right now at the national level, but we are go ahead and we're, we're, um, we're, we're adding the state level type stuff to it. So DAA, uh, drone advocacy alliance.com and sign up. And what they, all, all it is, is free. It's free. All you got to do is you, you put in your address and it says, okay, here's your state rep. Here's your state Senator. Well, federal um your washington rep and your washington senator and you say send this email and tell you what you need to know um this is what's wrong outside of that um you can also go ahead and find out who they are um either through you know you can find out who your state reps are uh each state's different so i can't really tell you that but you can usually go to the secretary of state and find that or even the um uh, here in colorado we can just go to the uh the senate or the house because we have a two uh, two chamber um legislation and find out, put our put our address in. It'll tell us who our people are, and we can reach out to them directly. Um, and then you have to tell them what's wrong with it. Uh, it's it's a it's a band aid for a problem that doesn't exist in the reality. If you look at all these, the whereases and the whereases are stupid asses. Um, it says what could happen, what may happen. This could happen. This will happen, um, or not will happen, but. Um, there's too much conjecture involved in the process and there's not any logic and there's not any common sense at all anywhere. 
Um, Florida was, boom, July 1st or whatever day it was. No, you can't do it. Well, there was no, one of the nice things about the Florida law is there's no repercussions if you don't follow it. So there are, I can't say which one, but there is a very large sheriff's department that basically told the state of Florida, like, um, you, we're going to use them. Our, our, our residents are more important than your politics. So a lot of people are doing that. Um, it's being challenged. I've heard, I haven't seen anything yet, but it's being challenged as an unfunded, unfunded mandate in Florida. Uh, but, but if you, if it comes up in your state, uh, like it is in Utah, like it is in Missouri, um, you really have got to start organizing, not only first responders, but the 107 folks. Um, and say, look, this this isn't necessary. It's not an issue. Let's say, first of all, I'm on my soapbox, by the way. Um, let's say everything happens that they say happens. Okay, China, China goes to DJI and says, we want your records or else. You know, we're going to take your family and blah, blah, blah. The PRC does all this fun stuff. Um, what do they get? The data streams that I have if when I'm updating any of my drones, and yes, I fly DJI um, for a very good reason. They're the best for the price at this point in time. The data streams do not, do not suggest that there's an issue with what I'm sending back to actually United States-based Amazon servers, by the way. Um, and let's say it does go back to China. Let's say it's, 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 it's passing through the Amazon servers going to China. What do they have? They have thumbnails at best. And that's if I update actually the flight records, which I don't do. It's all opt-in. It's not automatic. But then they say, well, you're updating your firmware. Um, I know what it takes to update. I know what the data streams look like. I send gigabytes of imagery to clients weekly. And so I know how long it takes to actually send usable imagery, usable high-definition imagery. And that's not happening when you update. So that data does not exist on their servers. I am not a data expert. I am a photographer. I, I, I tell everybody you're getting, you're getting, you know, I'm sure you have both have heard this and other people have heard this. You're getting legislative or regulatory advice from somebody with an art degree. So keep that in the back of your mind. Hmm. That data stream doesn't exist to show the high definition imagery. I mean, I'm sorry, it doesn't. And if, if, if it does, that means DJI set up and has, has developed this, this tremendous, this this tremendous piece of software that can actually shrink things down and can and 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 then blow them back up again. Um, this compression software that is just phenomenal. In which case, they need to quit selling drones and start selling that because they make a lot of money doing that. A lot so more. it's just stupid. Um, if it's a security issue, make it a security issue. Okay. Let's set up some kind of uh, cybersecurity protocols for every drone ever used for federal work. Whether it's DJI, Autel, Teal, Brink, and our favorite Skydio, um, you know what? Let's do it. Okay, if you want to fly, if Skydio, if you want your X10, which I'm hearing good things about, so let's be fair. If you want that to be a federally man, you know, a federally blue list or NDAA list or whatever, whichever list you want, make sure it's got security protocols in place. It can't just be a country of origin. I'm sorry, it can't. It, that is a band-aid to a problem that doesn't exist. So, <sighs> yep. drink. And DJI has been audited a lot in the but past. It's not like they haven't been audited by mm -hmm. for security leaks, and they have a very robust yeah. bug bounty program as well. I mean, ultimately, mm -hmm. DJI is a mm -hmm. consumer company, and they want to keep selling drones. Yep. So, if their drones aren't secure, they're yep. going to do something about it because you know then they won't sell any drones. Exactly, anymore. they won't make any exactly. money. Exactly. And Department of Interior actually did a test, and it came back, well, these are okay. Um, and then DHS told them to take it down. Right, which it was the <laughs> Mavic 2, right? It was like the older uh, platforms, right? I think so. I think so. But that's because that, that's what they tested. They, re, they probably didn't want to test any of the newer stuff in case, you know, they, they had to release those results and say, hey, it's safe, right? So I think it was something with the – it was like the Mavics or the Mavic 2. I think that's what yeah. they wanted to. Yeah. But then they were, to, they were told to take it down. Yeah, and that was silly. You know, if 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 it's an issue, if it's a true issue, I know me personally, um, I would work really hard at getting something else besides a DJI, even if it does cost more. 
you know, 50% more or whatever. But it's, it's not a true issue. It's, it's a what if. It's a what could happen. Um, we all know anybody who's spent any time in the United States or any time at all in Congress, uh, not in Congress, talking to Congress or even listening to the news, um, Congress leaks like the screen door in a submarine. If this was truly an issue, somebody, I won't mention names, but Marco Rubio or his staff <laughs> would, oh, I got a story about that. Anyway, um, his, he would have made sure that somewhere down the line, his staff would have emailed, you know, back in the 60s, it would have been, you, you know, you meet with a reporter in this danky bar somewhere on M Street um, and you pass these, these letters back and forth. But now you just send somebody an email from an, from an anonymous Gmail account. Um, and you get that information out. And these these would have come out and said, okay, here is the problem. Because right now, if you ask, and I'm on my soapbox, I'm sorry, shut me up if you need me to. Um, if you ask for this, say, give us the proof, we can't give you the proof, because then, they, you know, that's a, that's, a, that's a security issue. I'm sorry, but that, that won't fly. That won't fly. That, that's because there is no proof. There is no proof. <laughs> Could it happen? 100% absolutely. I don't think anybody with a reasonable mind is going to say, no, it will never happen. Anything connected to the Internet, my iPhone, can be hacked, period, end of discussion. No matter how good your protocol or how, how good your safety protocols are, what you need to do is you mitigate it to the best of your ability. And if it's an issue, you address it. You don't say, no China and no Turkey and no Russia and no Iraq and no Venezuela. I mean, really? Venezuela? <laughs> Yeah, they're a, they're a thriving drone market. Yeah. Manufacturing yeah, that's crazy. Market. So uh, we have some questions in the chat for some shout-outs. Shout-out to sure. Bobby Quinn, Carl Norfers, uh, Mark Kempton on the hey, uh, Bobby. compression business. We are in the compression business, not DJI. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, I won't go on that <laughs> tangent. But uh, Jake Mackey as well. Yeah. Can't. He says, uh, very Jake. logical thinking, Vic. Can't fight politics with logic. Follow the money. No, you can't. Trust me, I've tried. I've tried. You want the Rubio story? Let's hear it. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> we were um, let's. We were there with a. I was there with the AVSI. I am a member of AVSI. I am a. a, a, a I'm the, the treasurer of the of the Rocky Mountain uh, Rocky Mountain chapter, for now. Um, and so we went to we went to Hill Day, which is great. A, AVSI has a Hill Day, which is wonderful. You can go in and they set up appointments. You can go in and you talk to either the rep or the or the or the senator um, or their staff. Usually their staff because they're busy. I'm not going to fault them for not being able to meet. We'll get six, seven, eight, nine drone pilots in a room and talk to usually their staffer. Um, we were in Marco Rubio's office in his control in his um, conference room. Um, we have a 12 year old staffer. Okay, maybe he wasn't 12, but he should look 12. Um, and <laughs> we were just going around, um, and somebody brought up DJI. And his comment was, quote, nothing would make me happier than to see DJI wiped off the face of the Marco earth. Marco Rubio said that? That wow. is the – no, not Marco Rubio. Let's be clear. Marco Rubio did not say that. His staffer did. But you know where he got it. Right. Was he speaking for, for him? He was speaking as his staffer to a bunch of drone pilots. So – that's the level of ignorance that we're fighting. And I, I hope to God that somebody actually asked me up to testify and Rubio's up there because I'm telling him. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, it, you know, it's it's frustrating beyond uh, belief that we have to deal with this kind of stuff. Um, work with us. My op-ed in the Hill, work with us. Listen to us. We want to help. We're not a... We can fly our drones wherever the heck we want to fly our drones group. Yes, we shouldn't fly our drones. I shouldn't go down to the Air Force Academy and fly my DJI, you know, over the parade grounds. I shouldn't go out to Buckley Air Space here in Denver um, and fly over the golf balls. They have big radars that look like golf balls, so everybody calls them golf balls. Um, we know that. But for me, not to be able to fly my Mavic 3 Pros at Mesa Verde National Park because of a DOI directive? No, that's dumb. That's dumb. So we had to, yeah, we had to right. fly the X2. And thank you, Skydio. I will give you credit. Thank you, Skydio, for sending me two X2s and two people to help me fly them. So kudos to you for that. But it should never have Why did to happen. they send you two people to fly them? 
I didn't. I've never flown this the system before, and uh, you know, it was it was kind of a big deal. It's the first National Park Service drone flight, um, so they wanted to they wanted to make sure it went well, and it did. We got incredibly usable footage from the X two. That's not geofenced, right? No, it's not geofenced, but it's a blue list drone, and that's why somebody in one of these meetings it took months to get permission to fly a drone there. First of all, and finally somebody said, "Hey, why don't we use a blue list drone?" So they said X two. So, but by the way, it wasn't a blue list drone because we had the RGB sensor on it, and that's not included in the blue list. So, even that was like, yeah, but. But I want to thank Skydia for that. That gave me the opportunity to to fly in the national wow. park for Crazy. their videos. But um, it would have been a lot better if I could have used my my uh, Mavic Three Pros. So Chris Gracioso says thoughts on the ASDA or other legislation going beyond not being able to be bought with federal grants to a band down ASDA, ASDA to be um, a band down to states and yeah, ASDA, local agencies. which is part of the NDAA. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, American Security Drone Act, part of the National Defense Authorization Act, uh, signed into law just before Christmas last month or last year. The ASDA is a done deal. Um, one of the hardest things in the world to do is get legislation removed. Um, one of the things we did or were able to do, and we as in the community uh, through DAA and other sources, was if you read that the ASDA there are exclusions and um, uh, exemptions. So you can then, you can like say, okay, Secretary of DOI, I can't remember exactly if DOI is part of it, but OSHA is, NOAA is, I mean, um, and uh, some of the others, and TSB. You can ask for an exclusion or you can ask for an exemption for non secure areas. So that's what we need to concentrate on now to help fight, not fight. Um, to help craft the exclusion and the exemption process that are that are there already in the ASDA and then do things like DOI is not listed. So if we want to go ahead and, and fly on, uh, you know, if, if, the, uh, if, if somebody else in the National Park Service, another, another uh, park superintendent says, I want drone in my video, um, we can then go ahead and say, look, we're going to use a Mavic Pro. We're going to use, an, uh, you know, an Evo, whatever. Um, and we're going to set it up for local data mode. So there's not going to be any um, any data going anywhere besides from the controller to the drone. That's what we need to do is we need to work on those exemptions and those um, um, waivers, I guess is, is the technical term for that, to make sure that it's a reality, that it's, that it's, it's a log- logistical possibility to go ahead and, and fly our drones where they're capable and where they're not a security risk. Vic, do you think using third-party apps would help that out? There Instead is. There's you know, um, what, Drone Sense? Or drone Sense, right? Yeah, Drone Sense. Um, they set it up where it doesn't. That, but DJI even has local data mode. You know, in, in their enterprise versions, it's a lot more strict. Um, but even, even with my non-enterprise Mavic 3 Pros, I can just set it up as local data mode. So it doesn't do anything. So that exists, and what we need to do is we need to make sure that that then falls under that waiver or that exemption process. We need to craft that, and we need to push that, and that's kind of what I'd like to try and see DAA do and other uh, other organizations do is reach out to these executives and the, um, and the different uh, agencies and say, look, we get it. We understand. First of all, let's pass 2209 so people know what the heck critical infrastructure is, but um, let's push for a reasonable – logic driven process for these waivers so we can fly our drones on BLM land, uh, whatever, and give you the best imagery of some incredible American heritage like we have in Mesa Verde National Park. Get the, you know, let's show it to the American public in a view you cannot get as a private individual in the best possible light. No pun intended. Okay. I'm off my soapbox. Let's uh, just, just out of curiosity. (laughs) So, we're in the darkest timeline. What if Chinese drones are banned? Uh, what would that impact in mm-hmm. America, for instance? Um, oh, I hope I get the numbers right. Seven, if um, DAA put out a, a poll last year and said, hey, if you did not have access to Chinese drones, Autel, DJI, whatever, um, Hubson, mm-hmm. um, 
what would that do to your business? 70, ah, I think it was 75%. It might've been 60 something. I think it was 75% of the respondents said my business would go out of business. That's 75% of 360 plus thousand drone pilots, small businesses cease to exist. That's, that's mortgage payments. That's car payments. That's insurance payments. That's taxes. So I don't think that's going to happen. The FCC tried, uh, and that was, um, I can't remember his name, Carr, uh, you know, kind of one of his last hurrahs to try and make his, um, you know, his legacy in office was to revoke all the FCC permissions for Chinese drones, and that didn't go anywhere. That doesn't mean it won't be reintroduced, but I, I, I've i been wrong before, but I think Congress is smart enough not to do that. Uh, I just, I don't see that DJI or Autel or Hubson or rebranded Hubson called Exo, um, would ever not be allowed to fly in the United States. I just don't see that as, as, as you know, it's a multi-billion dollar industry. I think there'd be too much uproar. I even think Congress is collectively smart enough not to do that. And maybe, um, maybe I'm being Pollyannic. I don't know. Well, I mean, like Jake said, it's, it's not, you're not fighting mm-hmm. politics with logic. It's more about the money and whose pockets get mm-hmm. lined. For this to uh, yep. happen, money, 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 money. I mean, the people like that New York that control the legislature <laughs> yeah. also invest in the stocks in the companies that get affected. So they're just going to get richer doing that. Mm-hmm. It, I have I have no problem with the concept of lobbying. I really don't. I think I think it's imperative that we have a lobbying industry in the United States. Um, what I have a problem with with lobbying is when I'm trying to figure out how to say this. <laughs> um, when those doing the lobbying spread a false narrative to better their stance in the industry. Is that a nice way to say that without getting in trouble? No, I think that I think that was perfect. Very politically correct. Like somebody who's spending twelve thousand five hundred dollars a month in New York. <laughs> <laughs> plus ex- plus plus expenses plus Don't expenses. Forget the expenses which i'm sure it's you know whining and dining and you mm-hmm. know hookers oh i didn't oh. say that did I? i'm sorry <laughs> that's illegal Vix on who rolls. knows that, maybe that's part of, that's part of the extras but yeah that's that's the newest one right skydio's attack on new york right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um i actually have that entire thing i cannot tell you where i got it but i have the entire uh, agreement um and what's really funny and i will not publish it skydio so don't freak out um, there's a, there is a, um, clause in there about if you, if, if the information, it gets out. So I'm not quite sure what they're going to do. Um, now that, that, that entire agreement is public, I, I can tell you where I got it. I don't know who got where they got it. I could be fourth, fifth, sixth generation reception. Um, but I did not get it from Skydio. I did not get it from whatever the name of that company is in New York. I think I think it's out there. I think you can just um, it's. It, I think if you Google it, you can go on the state website and you can look at the lobbying stuff. I think it's there. Okay. Um, but I think I think we we I think we all saw this coming because a few months ago, remember they they had this big media event in New York City with you know Skydio and then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you know and, you know New York has drones and it's Skydio drones, but they they've had DJI products for years, right? Yep. And all of a sudden, you know, they they do this whole me- big media event, and all of a sudden, hey, they're getting drones, and it's and it's Skydios. And then I remember, like a few weeks after that, there was a there was a fire, and I remember seeing a picture, and you see the M30 doing Overwatch of the fire yep. on the crane, and I'm like, right on the crane, and I'm like, wait a minute, these guys just you know had this huge media event, spent probably tons of money to convince everybody that you know NYPD and FDNY they're using Skydio drones, and here you know here's this you know, major fire. Right. And it's an M30 that's doing the overwatch. Um, but yeah. And, and, you know, it's no surprise that, you know, now we see this, you know, 12,500 a month lobbying bill that Skydio is paying to, you know, get DJI drone, Chinese drones out of New York. Yep. Now we, we don't know for a fact, so I'm going to, I'm going to put on my, uh, don't sue me hat. Um, we don't know a fact that's where that lobbying is going, but I, I, I'm almost willing to bet the house on that. Because that's what they're doing. That's what they did it in Florida. They did it in Arkansas. 
Hmm, I should look that up. Um, so yeah, it's. I think that's probably where it's going to go. I think anybody who really pays attention to this kind of stuff understands that that's what they're going to try and do. Which leads me to my next point. I wonder who's going to have the biggest booth space at Exponential this year. I know probably a lot of people Skydio. who aren't going to have one. <laughs> yeah, I know. So they're, so Skydio's probably going to have half of the floor. It's probably going to be Skydio. Yeah, but the other half's <laughs> going to be empty. <laughs> yeah, it's just chairs. That's it. And I'm going. I, 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 um, I, I, I said I would go ahead because we have a Col- we're going to have a Colorado booth, um, not a Colorado booth because we can't. We did it here in Denver last year, obviously, because it was nice. You know, we're here. We have to have a Colorado booth. Um, we're going to have a, a, a Colorado sponsor at the uh, at Adrian's event, uh, his demo event. Um, so uh, I have to go do that. Um, I, I said I'd do that. I'm not going to back up on my commitments on that or back out of my commitments on that. But uh, yeah, so. We'll have a Colorado with presence, and we'll have some Colorado UES companies there because Colorado is the number one uh, uh, industry. We have more um, aerospace industry people per capita than any other state. So I'm going to get that out there. I'm going to give Colorado a free plug. We're second only to California in actual numbers. So, but California has so many people they don't count. Wow! I'll give someone else a, <laughs> a few a few other <laughs> companies a plug: AUVSI, Skydio, and Brink. Kyle Norfer says the Utah Senator openly admits the Utah bill is based off of his meeting or briefing from with Teal. AUVSI. And, and from Teal? Teal. Since Teal's based there. Oh, I, I'm 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 guessing. But oh yeah. Whoops, push that. Um yeah, I, I it doesn't surprise me um that uh, Michael Robbins is probably pushing that. Oh, Kyle, any sort of confirmation from you? We got a we just we just invite him on to this podcast. Give him a link. He just joins. He's probably yep. texting from like the plane. He's like flying the plane and just like we should do this right now. <laughs> yeah, he's he's trying to text. He, he's gonna he's gonna text and fly at the same time. Kyle, put down the phone. You know, we talked about doing that in the past, right, Bobby? Just like have just have people come yeah. up, right? Send him the link. Have him come on. Have him like in the background, then pop him in. But yeah, there's been a lot of a lot of big players that pulled out of the show this year already so far. I think like um, every day, like I've seen somebody announce that they're not going. Mm-hmm. Um, they uh, Greg did so. Pilot Institute pulled out. They weren't yep. going to have a booth, but but Greg was going to be there. Uh, they were going to be a presence there, um, and he said, "Nope, done." Um, okay, okay can't, can't say anything about that one. Um, <laughs> there is the drone uh, Southern California Drone Film Festival. Um, DSPA was going to be a sponsor of that. Uh, and I heard from that organizer, uh, I, I shall remain, who shall remain nameless, um, that they're holding off on that because people are pulling out of Expo and they're worried that it's not going to happen. The, no, Expo will happen. They're worried that the film festival is not going to happen um, and they're going to revamp the film festival so it's not associated with Expo. That's the plan. So, yeah, it's it's the, the Michael Robbins' last... Uh, uh, a LinkedIn prof or LinkedIn report, a LinkedIn uh, post has serious ramifications um, for an for AUVSI, and and that's sad. I I I like AUVSI. I'm I'm gonna I want to put that out there. I like their drone prepared program, where it's you know it we make state level preemption, which we're gonna try and push here in Colorado. I will not push it as AUVSI, but I will push it as DSPA. Uh, I am resigning uh, AVSI um, leadership uh, after Expo. Um, I like that aspect of it. I like their AAM prepared aspect of it. So they are doing good things, but they're kicking first responders. They're kicking the 360,000 plus DSPs in the teeth by pushing this false narrative that China is bad. Okay. CCP, not CCP, what is it, CRCP, CRP, whatever it's called, Chinese uh, Communist Party. They are bad, okay? That's, we get it, we get it. But to then have this big old huge umbrella with all these other companies is is, is really hurting the, the, the American drone uh, uh, industry. It really is. Yeah, but they're pushing that narrative on behalf of who? The, the, that, it, it, uh, <laughs> they didn't just... I, <laughs> What can I say? Um, the, uh, the 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 it looks like 
with Brink and Skydio being on the committees they're on, giving the money they're giving to AVSI. And AVSI is a an industry partner. I get it. So they need to keep their, their people happy. But it looks like they're pushing that narrative. And their DOD, AVSI is DOD centric. They really are, always have been. You know, it's less and less and less every year. But, um, you know, the air, sea, and, air, sea, and land. So we have to look at that too. But it's pushing... It's pushing the unsubstantiable narrative pushed out by two of the main U.S. drone manufacturers. I think I can say that without getting sued, right? <laughs> we'll find out tomorrow when the mail comes. Vic, would you sign for this, please? Um, <laughs> You'll be all right, Vic. I know, I know. It's not like it's not common knowledge. And I like Brian. I, I consider Brian a, a friend. I have a working relationship with him on the AAAC. And I don't want to jeopardize that, but he and other AVSI people, Scott, I, I love Scott. Scott's a really good friend of mine. He used to be with me at DSBA. Um, I don't want to jeopardize that. And I want to work with them to try and get this fixed. The narrative has to be fixed. And does that mean a town hall meeting that Brian chairs? Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm more than happy to join them. I'm putting that out there. You think they, you think they can come back from this? Like, if they did indeed accept all this, accept all this money from from Brink and Skydio, right? How do they come back from this, right? Because that post, the LinkedIn post, backfired. I'm it surprised did. they didn't. Huge. I, I'm surprised they didn't. I'm surprised they didn't take it down. Uh, but that was, <laughs> it was just it just kept. It was like a snowball effect. It just <laughs> it kept really going was. and going oh, and going. And there was you know, one positive post, and then Patrick Egan went out and blathered all over everything. Um, <laughs> Oh, that was out loud too, wouldn't it? Sorry. Um, but I, I think Brian, hmm, I would hope, let me rephrase that. I would hope that Brian would be open to that. Can they come back? Um, not right away. I'm going to say that not right away. I think if they have the staying power to recraft the message. I think um, that if they then will go and say, look, we get it. Okay. We, we maybe didn't think it through. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to put my head and put myself in somebody's head, which is always kind of a can backfire pretty bad. Um, if we can say, yes, okay, we get it. We've heard you. We've heard the hundred plus co negative comments in that LinkedIn article. Um. I think they can. I'm optimistic that they can, but I've been told I'm a little too optimistic about a lot of stuff by a lot of people. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my hope because I I like the mission behind AUVSI. I think they've drifted. Imagine the damage that's going to be done. Even even if they reach that point when they're like, oh, shit, we screwed up. Uh -huh. I think this, the damage is just going to be – it's going to be extensive already because – Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. 100%. It, it, um, uh the memory of this industry is not short. It is not short. They're not going to come back next year and say, hey, and everybody's going to go, oh, hi, I remember you. Uh, that's not how it's going to work. There needs to be some, I don't want to say damage control because that sounds like spin. Um, there needs to be some uh, uh, industry mea culpas and it needs to be genuine and it needs to come from higher levels. And it, it needs to come from Michael Robbins saying, look, I'm sorry. Perfect point. I don't know if you saw, I, I imagine a lot of people you heard that saw that video uh, of Michael's. Um, did anybody else notice that there's an S2 on that? There's a Skydio mm -hmm. S2 on that table. That is not a blue drone. So this is not about security. It's not no, it's about, about security. It's about money. <laughs> we all know that. It's yeah. about money, right? Yeah. Um, so wait, guys, yeah. guys, okay. who do we have here? What's going on? Yes. What's who going on? Uh oh. Dun, 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 dun. There he is, Mr. Kyle. Hi, guys. What's up? Recurring How guest. Up? How's it Kyle going? Is my Morphers? sound okay? You sound great and you look great. Well, the one and only. It's a pleasure to be hanging out with Vic once again. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Lewis, good to see you. What's up, Kyle? Dude, I like your office. That's phenomenal. 
This is a labor of love. It's actually a movie room. And so I'm remodeling my normal office. So my wife is allowing me to occupy the movie room <laughs> with my computer until I get that situated up top. Looks, so It looks great for a background. It's a work in progress. Yeah. <laughs> Better than mine. My work uh, bench. Like, awesome. Wait a second. Well, give me two minutes. Goes, goes to the movie room, sets up everything, turns on all the lights. <laughs> Fantastic. So we well, I had the to park the jet first. Oh, you had to park the jet. Yeah, yeah. 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 You got one of those big garages <laughs> with the folding door out front. <laughs> so, right. So are we off the mark, Kyle? With uh, what exactly? What did I miss? With did I miss anything <laughs> from where? I mean, with Bobby, you never can tell. <laughs> Skydio. But, uh, and oh, with Skydio. A, a relationship. So I was... I, I've been down to the Skydio HQ several times, and I really like the people down there. There's great I've people al- there. Absolutely. I've always enjoyed my visits there. I love working with their public safety side of, uh, of, of it. I, I've been a beta tester for them. I was also an alpha tester for some of their software. Hmm. And um, it's it just – it's so frustrating to see the direction in which they've gone. Um, starting at the top with Adam, with the way in which he's um, trying to direct the uh, the company, and I can understand them wanting to be competitive and uh, you know sell as many. I mean, they're a for profit company. I Absolutely. totally get that. Can't fault but, them for that. Correct. But when you're trying to, you guys have been talking a little bit about Florida and um, the damage that has been done down there because of their governor just completely ripping things out. Um, I, I, I agree with you that the damage that has been done or will be done because of their lobbying efforts is just 100% inexcusable. And um, I, I am a partially, no, I shouldn't say partially, I'm very passionate about this subject because in search and rescue, as you guys know, search and rescue is my jam. I don't know the first thing about law enforcement, like what, what Lewis does or programming with the boy genius Bobby or uh, even photography, Vic, I'm, I'm nowhere near you. Search and rescue is kind of my jam. And so if I was forced to use a Skydio drone, even the X 10, I can give you actual names of people that would have perished. Had I not been able to use the most, um, uh, the, the best drones for the, uh, for the job, you know, there is not an American product that can replace the dragonfish. Hmm. And as you guys know, I have John McBride just right down the street here, and he has his dragonfish available to us whenever we want, as long as he's in town with it. But, um, you know, with that uh, Matrice 30T, the M300 or 350 with the H20T or the H20N, it's just, I don't know. I'm passionate about it because I've seen this technology save lives, and the lobbying efforts are hurting that effort. I've also been, well, on SWAT calls. Um, you know, in different scenarios, these drones are preserving the lives of our men and women in blue. They're keeping them safe. Whether you are doing an overwatch for with the strike force on a drug bust or you're sending the drone in on a SWAT call or doing something like that. And if you're telling us that we can no longer use the best drones for the job, then you're, you're just putting lives at risk, plain and simple. I, I don't see any other way to sugarcoat it. You're, it's putting American lives at risk and I don't fault them for their business procedure or like wanting to make a profit. I do fault them for the moral implications of their, the, the potential downfall of this. It's in my mind, inexcusable. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm talking, I know from my perspective, I can't use the best drone I can to get really beautiful video of Mesa Verde national park. Big whoop. Okay. Big freaking whoop. What you're talking about is, is, is it costs lives, period. End of discussion. You cannot argue that point. Done. Yep. Wholeheartedly agree. And so referencing uh, Senate Bill 135 here in Utah, the senator did listen to us, and he took out everything except for the critical infrastructure. And they do have a link for what is defined as critical infrastructure. 
and the list is so long, it is so ridiculous as to what is considered critical infrastructure, that it is going to damage or hurt a lot of businesses like you were mentioning, uh, Vic. Uh, th th there are a lot of uh, businesses out there that use these drones to pay their bills, pay their mortgages, that they're now no longer going to be able to use the most eff efficient drones for that purpose for inspections. And um, it's going to have a lot of downsides that they're probably not even thinking of. One of the, uh, the more infuriating things for me when the financial financial report for this particular bill came out, it didn't take drones into consideration whatsoever. It was all about everything up above, you know, from part one to part 11. It didn't even incorporate part 12 because the people that were doing the finances obviously are woefully uneducated as to what a drone is, what it costs, or what the ramifications are of having this, uh, you know, uh, this type of bill, uh, country of origin ban in place. So you say deal. they have a list of, of, of CI. Does that include like transmission lines? Yes. Yeah. What's on that list? I can't fly in my backyard. I cannot yeah. fly in my backyard. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah because I have transmission lines in my backyard. Yeah, I'll pull that up. That's silly. Uh, Missouri, same way. The the, the uh, 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 Mister, whatever his name is, I can't remember the senator there. His, it, it, the, his list of CI. If you want to make that list, that's fine. But at the bottom of it, you need to say as amended under 2209. You know, Congress got to get off their butt. They were told to put 2209 into place in 2018. I think it's at the OMB now. Uh, oh, should we explain what 2209 is? Go for it, yeah. Probably, huh? Um, yeah. It's, it's mandated in, a two, I want to say 2016, and then again reiterated in 2018 FAA reauthorization. It is, it is a mandate that the FAA get with DHS and other alphabetic agencies um, to designate what critical infrastructure is. And it's just sitting. It had, they had 90 days. So that would have been December of 2018. And this is uh, uh, February of 2024. They're a little late. Um, that needs to be put out because the government or the federal government's not putting it out. So the states need to put it out. We're all over the board tonight. Sorry. Um, and until the federal government says, okay, this is CI. The states are going to fill in that hole. We're seeing it in Missouri. We're seeing it in Utah. We're seeing it in uh, Arkansas. We're going to see it in New York. Uh, we've seen it a couple times in California, although the, so far it's been defeated in California. Unless the federal government, I almost said a bad word, uh, not on purpose, um, the federal government gets off their butt and OMB gets off their butt, gets off their ass and puts 2209 out in a reasonable fashion, this is going to be a continual fight. We're going to have 50 small little fights instead of one big one. And from what I understand, it's ready to go with exception of DHS um, is being a stick in the mud about what they want to consider CI. And that's just from what I've heard from my contacts. I got a, I got so, a, yeah. okay. Back off the soapbox comment, again. Uh, on our chat. Chris says, so we lobby to create funding for American manufacturing. Is that not what they're doing? Anyone want to speak on that? Um, I do not have a problem with funding American manufacturing. What I have a problem with is then turning around and using that funding to cut the legs off of the giant of the industry. You do not raise an industry by cutting the giant off at the knees. You raise an industry by putting the smaller companies above or at least in comp com competition with the large company. You don't raise the standards by lowering the standards. You raise the standards by lowering the product or uh, raising the product. Sorry. Give the U.S. manufacturers some tax breaks. Give tax them breaks. Some federal um, grants. Give them absolutely, something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Skydio, if you can get your poop in a group and put out a product with, with U.S. backed money, with federally backed money, I will buy it. But it's yeah. going to yeah, be they, a comparable product for even a little bit more. And I'm not, I'm not enterprise. Yes, I have some enterprise drones, but I'm not an enterprise guy. You, you cut the legs out of everybody, and you say, oh, we're not going to do the prosumer anymore. But when they first started with their lobbying efforts, right, they, they targeted the federal agencies, right? That's right. why mm -hmm. the federal grant money, everything was taken away, right? So they had access to all those big contracts, right, which they did. Mm -hmm. I remember a while ago, I think um, – uh, ATF had purchased a bunch of Skydios, right? And when they arrived, they arrived in different boxes. I remember talking to, I think it was one of the program managers. And it arrived in a bunch of different boxes. And when they finally got everything together, I guess they were using 
co-packers or something like that to send out their products. So when they eventually got it and they started flying it, they were they were just they were garbage. And the, I remember the guy made a comment. He's like, I wish I could just take these and just shoot them, use them as target practice, right? And it's like the crime. Why didn't they just stop? Right. They they so they they stopped you know municipality state state agencies from purchasing you know Chinese drones on grant money, right? So they took the grant money away, right? And even with all the sales that they were making with with the federal agencies and all that stuff, they were making a lot of money with it. It still wasn't good enough for them, right? They still needed to continue with the lobbying and now go state to state and, and target everything, right? Use that money and just perfect your damn product, right? Right. All the millions of dollars that they've wasted on this lobbying bullshit, right? Just make your product better. That's what it comes down to. I think we're all on the same page. We'll, we'll, we'll support an American drone company as long mm-hmm. as it does what we are used to, right? Right. And, and, and not be forced to you know, now buy this crap, right? I would I would not operate a drone program if that was the case, right? If they come right. into New Jersey and they say, no more Chinese drones. Okay, no more drone program. That's it. It's right. as simple as that. Or right. go out and just buy a bunch of parrots, right? <laughs> well, yeah. Well, like Jake Mackey said earlier, you can't fight politics with logic. And what really drives me nuts throughout this entire thing is the cognitive dissidence and the dis- uh, intellectual dishonesty mm. that they're focusing in on drones on one, a particular brand of camera in the sky, but they're completely ignoring all the other cameras that are on the ground in our pockets, all the uh, DSLRs, all the everything else there, for whatever reason, the, the intellectual inconsistency and dishonesty that's associated with this screams that it's simply politics and nothing more. Right. It, it's, it's maddening. I like yeah. to liken it. It's like, okay, you if if you're in a if you're in a Senate office and it's like, oh crap, our modem died. Well, we can't just go down to Best Buy and buy a modem and hook it up, right? There is a procedure involved, and there has to be certain modems that are qualified. And I'm sure they have some kind of cybersecurity protocol. Awesome. You probably don't want a Best Buy modem running all our stuff through your office, right? Drones, same thing. Give us the protocols. Give us the protocols. Yeah, you don't go down to Best Buy and buy a Mavic 3 Pro and hook it up and fly in D.C., although I have flown in D.C. Um, With a DJI, by the way. You have those protocols already in place, so why can't they then go ahead and do the same thing with drones on areas that need security? Define the security risks. Define the security areas. Define the security protocols and apply them across the board. Problem solved, end of discussion. But, but you that's can't, too they can't logical. do that because sky, how many Skydio components are made in China, right? Well. I, just, I, I shared that picture <laughs> with you guys earlier, right? That battery, right? That right. Yeah. Made, made, it, made in China, right? <laughs> yeah. Which is I fine. Sh- I was trying to share it, but I can't Perfect. figure it out. Yeah, no, I'll that's okay. Um, everybody, up. lots of people have seen it. Um, and yeah, the, the, the Chinese batteries for Skydio, great. You can get a good battery for a good price out of China, and it's not going to do anything to the security of the drone. Got it. No problem. Use it. Make that product that the Americans want reasonable by using a Chinese-sourced battery. Where does it say it? Fine. Oh, no. Do no. it. But be reasonable it's... and be honest. Right there. Wow. Right there. Honest. I did not think we'd Maybe. go this direction today, but I'm kind of glad we did. What What if that's a smart battery and it communicates with, oh, with it the can. drones? I guarantee <laughs> it's got it's got chips in it. But so Shame what? on you, Skydio. So what? That chip, if it's not if it's if it's got a protocol behind it that says no talkie here. Oh, that was not supposed to be as this as it sounded. I'm sorry. Hey. Um, that was not supposed to be that. I don't know why it came out. But um, if, that, if that thing doesn't talk, so freaking what? Good. Use it. Put a nice, well-built, inexpensive battery in your drone and pass that savings along to your customer. It's called... Do you- it's it, uh, okay. Go ahead. Sorry. Shut up, Vic. I was I was going to say. Do you guys think that DJI and Autel are doing enough to fight this? Autel's doing squat. What's Autel doing? I mean, they they don't care. Squat. Nope. They're nope. They're trying to go IPO and IPO in China, and um, they don't want to have to worry about the expense. Yep. I did. And I will I, not Daniel tell you who Hoff told me that. What DJI is doing quite a bit. Oh yeah, I work with Daniel a lot at DAA. Yeah, um, I, I had a meeting with him today, he and uh, David 
McGoldrick. David. Oh, David's back. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And they they really are. They're if you need them, they're there. But I I would say that probably the biggest problem is that most people don't know that they're there. Right. Um, for That's, when we go out and talk to them, that should be remedied soon. I'll say that. Great guys. Very. Important. I love Dan. Yep. Dan and David are both. David just got back from maternity leave. Paternity leave. Sorry, he has a little baby girl. Good for him. Yeah, I think I think that's what we're missing. I think we're missing a little a little support, more support from them, right? Because it seems they like have we're to you be know we're... careful. Um, their their persona, you know, DJ is persona non grata uh, in DC, and so uh, uh, the 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 um, op ed in the hill from Admiral somebody I can't think of his name all of a sudden. Um, was all about how DJI is now, you know, the DAA is a, a DJI influence uh, group, peddler, whatever they called it. Um, and they're all down about that. So they kind of have to have to be careful as as to how they're perceived in D.C. You know, they can't lobby, per se, supposedly, because they look bad, but everybody else is allowed to lobby. But um, isn't that like the pot calling the kettle black with yeah, Skydio and ABSI and Brink mm-hmm. and Till mm-hmm. and all that? It's maddening. You know, one of my biggest pet peeves about this whole thing is that the people will voice their concerns without evidence or without proof. And if you do ask them for the actual proof and the actual evidence, they'll come back and fall back on that. It's classified. I can't (laughs) divulge that to you as part of my briefing from Homeland Security or something like that. Well, if you're getting a briefing as a state senator or state uh, representative, it's obviously not classified. Um, But... Uh, you know, and, and also when they voice their concerns, I'm not going to fault our the local Congress or uh, legislators too much, but because uh, I do think that they're all trying to do the right thing. They're just being misled and lied to or told that something's a bigger deal than it actually is or saying that the problem's only with one company or another or uh, country of origin. And, and they're, the, their efforts are not solving their concerns. Hmm. They're not solving the issue for which they're trying to write these bills for. So, for example, with the I, I can really only speak intelligently on the Utah bill because I've spoken to the bill sponsor personally. Um, he is afraid of the drones being hacked. And um, so we're I, I talked to John McBride. He's going to help us. We're going to go down and give him a demo and show him exactly what the technology Beautiful. is, what the limitations are, what uh, these things can and can't do. But he he's sincerely afraid that these drones are going to be hacked. But then when we tell him that these uh, the drone, while it's physically in the air, the drone itself is not connected to the internet. It's only connecting uh, connected to the control station. Whereas the American-made drone, like the X-10, for example, has that 5G dongle built into it. So if you're truly concerned about a drone being hacked, the American product's more likely to be hacked than the Chinese product. That's terrible. Uh, But, you know, of course, they're not going to tell them that. Um, when you can, like Vic, you were talking about local data mode. I mean, that's like the end all be all. So I wish they would come out with a list of their actual concerns and mm-hmm. then addressing it from an agnostic point of view. What can we do with all of these drones to satisfy these concerns? So then that way we can tell the operators that are using these drones, as long as you follow these guidelines to ensure security, then go ahead and buy whatever drone you want, because this will apply to everything. Instead, we're being, you know, it's almost reminiscent of McCarthyism. Dan and I were talking Ooh, about that today. Yep, yep. It's I've McCarthyism. It's just straight up. It's a belief. It's turning into a, a religion. Of speaking sorts. of Chinese drone security, we have a I, you, contract you, uh, with DHS in conjunction with Rutgers University, where we're mapping out campuses at Rutgers um, with DHS funding using Chinese drones right now. Dotels and uh, uh-huh. Mavic 3 Pros. So it's not like... It, these Chinese drones are body. making our campuses a lot safer for active shooter situations, yep. and yet here we are banning yep. them. Which, by the way, not to change the subject total, uh, completely, but damn, Bobby, your your company is just crushing it. The new awesome. stuff that you guys are coming out with, and the indoor mapping now. I mean, that is those three D models that you guys are doing from indoor facilities. I mean, SWAT teams are going to be eating that up alive. That's, That's just awesome. fantastic. It, you, you're crushing it. Thank Bobby. you. Way to go. Thank you. Hopefully, it helps people sell houses as well. I really, we've I've been uh, 
Oh yeah, well, exactly. My girlfriend and I are looking at houses, so <laughs> I've just been recording videos of houses because like nice. the the 3D tours are terrible. They're all like like panoramas, it. like it's like zooming out. Well, and I, I had. Oh, um, it looks like we lost Bobby, but um, huh? uh, I he, no, I'm still there. We go. He um he sent You're me a link to do that, and I flew at DIA, the new security uh, checkpoint at DIA, last Monday. Uh, first time anybody's flown in Denver National Airport terminal. So it was kind of cool. Um, and so I, I reached out to TSA. I've actually, I've got a contact. I phone, I call her and she's like, hi, Vic. It's like, okay, whatever. Um, I wanted legend, to Vic. fly their security system and map it for Bobby. She's like, yeah, no. What? <laughs> Terrible. She's like, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Maybe I'll do my I'm, church. I'm, I'll, I'll see if I can map my church for you. How does that sound? I'm, I'm working on something like that. Similar, Vic. Um, nice. Hopefully in the next few weeks. Yeah, right, airport Bobby? flyers. Oh, I mean, everybody sweet. here flies drones and Yay. works near airports. So we're going to get some airports nice. snapped out. Well, if you're flying inside of the building, you know, mm -hmm. technically it's not FAA. You can just Oh, no, definitely not FAA, it. but TSA yeah. definitely has a say in the matter. <laughs> what if what if I took what if I took my Avada on my empty airplane Ooh. and uh, fly that for that you? That would mapping? be so cool. <gasps> oh, that'd be awesome. I'll see if I oh, can, I can't can wait get to permission see that. for that. I'll I'll try to get permission for that. Of course, it's a seven thirty seven max, so there's a lot of exits and doors and stuff. <laughs> who, who knows? It might Couple get extra. I don't might know. Pop up. Yep. You could always use yeah. your cell phone yeah. video. I mean, it doesn't have to be in Avada. Avada's is. more fun. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's gotta, it's gotta be a drone, dude. <laughs> you know okay, those I'll FPV fly-throughs where, like, you know, people are doing their, you know, daily things, and FPV drone just like flies through the office. I'm pretty sure if I rip one of those videos from YouTube, I could probably turn that office space into a 3D model. Just like take it, upload it to our system, be cool. and get an interior model of, you know, Axon's Jeez. office. I just saw one of a cruise ship, I think, of not too long ago. Neat. And it was Send it cool. my way. Or just upload it yourself. You have access to uh, our early testers group. That's genius Ooh, for a cruise ship. Can you imagine oh, that? Yeah. Like Before you get on the ship, you can like explore the whole ship and move through yeah. it the whole time in a 3D model. That's genius. Let's get Virgin Voyages on that. They'll do it. <laughs> are, are, he likes are there that any, stuff. Are there any ter interior flight drone videos of uh, Skydio's uh, headquarters, Sky headquarters <laughs> that we can use for that? Yes. Yes, there are. There is, yes, right? Yes, there are. Uh-huh. Yep. yep. Wow. You got some homework in the next few days, Bobby. Homework. The, the build is really... Which I remember the first time I was down there, they had the indoor video, uh, and the uh, they put it out online, if I remember right, flying right over the X-2, and that was back when the X-2 was still under development for the military, Oops. and they only had the 1.8 gigahertz uh, uh, variant available, and um, yeah, I was able to see that. I'm like, oh, and there's their dock, <laughs> <laughs> all of which were still secret at that time. Yep. It's all about security. <laughs> <laughs> was the best joke right there of the whole night nice nice jake says uh and, and security and money jake says um oh no it's about security it's not about money <laughs> jake has the h dji hq fpv video we're gonna try to upload that into the platform right now oh that would be cool make it 3d of their new building their new building i believe so Oh, I cool. could never work there. That bridge between the two. It's like, no, I have to go all the way down and then go back all the way up again. I, I couldn't do the bridge. I'd pass just, out halfway just don't, through. Just don't look down. You just got to look up. Doesn't matter. I know it's there. I'll pee. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold your hand, Vic. Thank you we very much. Together. You know, we, we can do it. Your hand will still get wet, by the way. <laughs> totally down with it. <laughs> okay. Let's too much it. information. Cool. <laughs> oh, this is neat. That took a weird well, turn. Well, hey, guys, I know that I was the guest, and I kind of, like, uh, stole or just stole jumped in. But no, I, um, my wife has a – she's a, on the search and rescue team as well. She has <gasps> a, a cadaver canine, and um, she's nationally certified through Sweet. NAPWADA, the North American Police Work Dog Association, something like that. And they have a big training tonight, and um, so it's a lot of fun to watch those dogs work. So if you don't mind, I'm going to bounce so I can go support my wife uh, through yes, that canine too. training. And uh, thanks for letting me jump on. Vic, uh, I'll be in touch with you because uh, when yeah. we do this demo, um, uh, anyway, I just want to pick your brain a little bit more. Please Lewis, do, always please a pleasure. Do. Tell your wife thank you for her thanks service. Thanks for coming on, Kyle. 
Okay, guys, take Thanks, care. Kyle. See you, Bobby. We'll Bye. see you. Bye. Oh, he oh, didn't cool. stay to record the clips. He's not going to show up in the podcast. Uh, oh, oh, come on. He's been on this podcast. He knows. Hang on. Yeah, I thought it's constantly uploading. Isn't it constantly yeah, uploading? Yeah, but you're supposed to wait like yeah, it says 99% minutes or uploading on me. Well, that was awesome to have him on. It, it just, it's funny. He said the same things I did, and he didn't hear what I said. <laughs> So that's confirmation. Uh, he was uh, he was typing th- in chat, Vic, furiously typing. We're we're all. I think we're we're all on the same page. Oh, it's, absolutely. It's sad, be- yeah. It's sad because you know we're all fighting the same fight, but you know, hopefully, there's a gr- there's a good outcome at the end, right? Let's hope. Um, my dream um, or nightmare is that. The senders behind this, the red, the, 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 the house of the reps behind this, the people who are really pushing, the, which sadly is my party, um, come to the realization it's like, you know what? We're screwing up. We're hurting Americans. We need to, we need to turn the tide. We, we need to develop an American drone industry, not end user industry, manufacturer industry that can do that can provide drones for the the 90 plus percent of drone service providers out there. There are some good American drones. I think we can all agree on that. Um, There are some good American drones, but we don't have that. The 90 plus percent of drone users, there's nothing but Chinese drones, period. End of discussion. It does not exist. That market does not exist. And if somebody could develop it at a reasonable price, Right. Then um, they they couldn't make them fast enough, which it's just a, you know gets us into the whole we don't have the we don't have the capability to to manufacture anything anyway, even if it did exist. So, you know, we gave China this twenty five thirty years ago. We 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 handed China the keys to our to our industry, um, and we can't just yank them back and start over. We have we have to develop the infrastructure. We have to develop the chips uh, factory. You know, just like the one in Phoenix, we need more of those being built. So we can have a, a secure supply chain. It does not exist. Period. Those two-year, three-year, uh, you know, phase ins of these rules. So what? It, it's pie in the sky. It's terrible, and I, I don't know. I'm not too optimistic about this, just because. Well, the, there's so much be. money behind it and there's not that much money on the opposite side there's a lot there's of money DJI it. doing some Which stuff it, in and, and of it. itself is not a bad thing money behind it is not a bad thing it's how it's used it's how it's used it's the fallacies it's, that that brendan gross puts out it's um it's it's the push behind a false narrative that destroys an industry that destroys first responders, that costs American lives. I've been told not to say that, but it's true. It's true. So, okay, done. How would it affect you, Lewis, if you had to use American drones? I, I it would be hard. I don't think the the funding would be difficult, right? I don't. We we wouldn't we wouldn't have. The funding to, to purchase the amount of drones that we operate now, right? We have a successful DFR program, right? What are we, what are we going to use? Brink, you know that claim. You know they're going around telling everybody that you know they they figured out DFR and you know they they have a DFR guide, but yet they don't have a DFR platform, right? Is that what we would have to use? So it's kind of you know it's I, I don't I don't think it would be possible. I think we would have to you know probably not operate a program and wait until something came out that, that, you know, met our expectations. Well, you, you would need to push then if that legislature comes down, you need to push for no, no punishment. If you ignore it, like they have in Florida. <laughs> Sheriffs are just right. saying, Nope, screw you. We're not doing it. And hopefully, hopefully it, they're all like that. Right. I don't know. I've got to look at Missouri's a little closer. Um, I don't think the Missouri one will go through, but we still need to fight it pretty hard. The I don't same... understand if you're, good. If, if you're use if you're using federal funds, right, to purchase equipment. Or, you know, there's a lot of municipalities and state agencies that use federal funds, right? Mm-hmm. I understand mm-hmm. that you can't use it for that. But now, if you're using, you know, actual department funds, right, or seizure funds, right, 
how are they going to control that? How are they going to say you can't use that now to purchase Chinese drones? Well, you the know, seizure funds, don't they go federal and back state? Or do you guys have it set up so it, the state gets them automatically? It, it depends if the funds are coming in from from federal or their state, right? So there's two different pots. Okay. Um, so they're not all federal seizure funds. Okay. They Yeah, how would you use, okay, we used $10,000 to buy X. Okay, where'd you get that? What bucket did it come out of? It's like, well, it's all fungible. Okay, so prove it. You know, we have right. bucket A of state funds, we have bucket A of private funds, and we have bucket C of, or BC, of federal funds. Well, we have to use bucket B because that's private funds. It's 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 a logistical and book bookkeeping sleight of hand, basically. Money is fungible. It's that's how it works. Or maybe DJI has to come out with their own DJI grant, grant programs. programs right? Can you imagine? There you go. <laughs> DJ, there you go. <laughs> they got DJI. in trouble for that. That's what started this whole thing. Oh, that INS yes. employee in California that said, hey, they're giving, they're giving these first responders drones and uh, they're using it to spy on car accidents. I mean, I don't know exactly what he said, but that's what started this whole silliness. It was an INS agent who had no freaking idea what he was talking about. Somebody grabbed it and ran. And, and then certain companies took advantage of that. Bingo. We're going to get some hate It's mail. all gossip. <laughs> Uh, not not from the industry. No, not from the industry. Gossip. This is usually you. It it doesn't matter. It it doesn't matter who we have on as a well. It's a little different today, Vic, because you you're a lot more knowledgeable than you know on this topic than a lot of the people we have on. But we normally have these little rants on every episode, right? Um, oh, good. So we haven't gotten any hate mail. Haven't gotten sued. Um, so hopefully it stays that way. I, I'm, I'm assuming uh, the person I mentioned earlier is going to have a rant about that on LinkedIn. It's all right. They can put up another post and get blasted again. That's well, not fine. AVSI. This was a, somebody <laughs> oh. else. Oh, okay. But I welcome AVSI to put up another post. <laughs> I, 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 Brian, please let's ha- let's have let's have a community discussion. Let's have uh, uh, some kind of of. of some kind of online thing where we can address these issues and, and professionally, not a shouting match, not not a, 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 a what was that guy who did the the TV shows? Um, he was like he Jerry had the Springer. Security. I oh, can't are we going to do a Jerry anyway, Springer episode um, for Drones After Dark? Jerry Springer. Okay, okay we're Brian not going to have a Jerry Springer yes, show. Uh, we're going to um, get an Oprah on. show. Going to send him the um, invite link. <laughs> Let's do uh-huh. it. it, it I, I Wait, want... what's, what's in the envelope? Whose name is in the envelope? Yeah. You, you are, are not, not the, the father. Um, you are not the father. You are the father and the mother and the <laughs> uncle and the grandfather. Oh, um, you did pay all that money to the lobbyists. <laughs> Let's, you know, Brian, whoever. Okay, Brian, Michael, whatever. Um Let's let's have a community meeting. Let's let's have a neighborhood meeting. I don't care what you call it, but let's. You have a chance to put out why you know why you're doing what you're doing, and then let us address it. I like Brian. I do. He's a great guy. Um, I hopefully still consider him a friend. Um, but it's you're hurting. You're hurting your industry. You're hurting your your reputation. And I get it. You're you have to do things a certain way, but you don't have to do them this way. So I'm trying really hard to be diplomatic. Is it coming across that way? <laughs> No, it is. It is. And I think, I think, you know, some people say that, you know, it's not the, you know, I think Kyle said something that he doesn't fault the legislators that much for, you know, what's going on Mm -hmm. because, but at the same time, I think you have to, because if they're, if they're being told something and they're not questioning, Hey, show me the proof, right? You want me to support you, right? Show me the proof. You know, where's all these data leaks? What are they taking? You had, you know, has any, has anybody done a deep dive into the software, right? Like where are these leaks that you speak about? Right. And if they're still making their decisions without, you know, asking for that stuff, then I think they are they are at fault. I, th- I think they are to blame. They're part of the problem. Legislators they're, they're... rely heavily on their staff, heavily on their staff, and you can't expect every legislator to know everything about every per, every 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 subject. Just like you can't expect a president to know everything. And so that's why you surround the, the uh, president surrounds his kid with a cabinet that knows their poop. Right, and then they have to do it, but you have to have non-biased poop presented to you. Can we say that? Um, and it, it's, it is. It's from the president all the way down to the to the the, the city council member. Um, 
it's you've got it you've got to look at it like okay you say you say a makes sense but i want to talk to the people who think b and let's right. let's let's meet in the middle somewhere and they don't want to hear not, from b right that's not happening because we're getting they're cutting us out you know mm -hmm. at the mm -hmm. end of the day these are people that you know they're, they all want to get reelected, right? Mm -hmm. And elections cost, you know, their reelection costs money. And, you know, that's what it comes down to, right? I I think they can care less if we're flying drones or we're flying, you know, RC airplanes. I, I, they, I, don't, I don't think they care. I think it's just a matter at the end of the day, it's a matter of the money. And right now the money talks and that's it. I think we're all going to suffer for it. A lot of industries will, a lot of a lot of verticals will, I should say. PG and E, perfect example. We don't want Chinese drones. Oh, the rest of the drones suck. Let's go back to Chinese drones. Yep. And and I think that the whole brainwashing and I've said this before in other episodes. I I get I get random calls all the time from departments that are looking to start programs and they're like, you know, we want to pick your brain. I'm like, all right, you know, what do you want to talk about? Oh, we need to buy we need we want to buy drones, but we can't buy Chinese drones. And I'm like, Okay, what do you mean you can't buy Chinese drones? Oh, because we heard that we can't purchase them. And then, you yep. know, and these are not right. And that's what it comes down to. It's just, it's just, it's, it's like word of mouth now. It's not even mm -hmm. like, you know, we're dealing with the lobbying on the political, you know, the, with the legislation. Right. But then we have these departments that they're not even doing their own. They're not even doing their homework. Right. They're just, Oh, I heard that we can't buy Chinese drones. So now mm -hmm. we're, you know, we're looking at these other options yep. when they're not even being, told that they can't they just they're taking a they're taking amongst themselves to make this decision because they they heard about it and that brings up you see a lot of a lot of these legislators right or wrong intentional or unintentional say this will only affect government projects nonsense because Ooh. like you said it's you know somebody in this call um in the chat i don't know if they're still there or not um, there are energy companies that say we're not allowed to buy drones. We're not allowed to buy DJI drones. We're not allowed to buy Autel. No, it's usually just DJI. It's like, well, let's buy Autel. Autel's well, made in America, right. out. apparently. Um, they're listening to the news. That's all they're doing. Or yeah, ex that's, it, that's it. That's all they're doing is listening to the news. Oh, no. China bad. I, China bad. I actually, no. I actually had, a, I had a conversation today about this topic that there's like brink brink is really good at doing that right they're really good at the, the way that they market themselves right with you know i think a lot of times they just pay to be on talk shows and to be in certain publications right and they love talking about the same crap all the time right how you know and i'll bring a perfect example our drones were used in the ukraine to save lives right you you hear that a lot right from brink and it's everywhere right but they weren't right they, there's 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 people that were there that that will vouch that th their drones were not used. Yeah, they were there, but they weren't able to fly. They they were impractical. But yet, everybody thinks that you know you know we're gonna go on you know you on all these morning shows and talk about how you know our product. I don't know if they're obviously they're doing that so they can you know raise more money and their investors are happy and this and that. But I think it call, it creates this false narrative, right? Like everybody, oh yeah, bring drones are great, you know. You know, all tactical teams should have them, but I, you know, just they're not. You it's know, marketing. It's, just, it's sad that this it's marketing working. And yep, I work in the marketing industry. I get it. I get it. But you know, there's a difference between saying my house is better than your house or my building is better than your building. Um, who's going to get hurt? Yeah. All right, yeah. Vic Moss. Season three, episode four. You are yes. the longest episode so far. And we had our special guest. Well, awesome. Thank you. Well, I appreciate I appreciate the platform. This stuff bubbles up in me and obviously bubbles out of me. Um and it's 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 the message I've tried so hard to get out. It's like work with us. Let's look at the logic behind it. Let's use common sense. Let's not fly these drones where they're not supposed to be flown. I get it. And oh, by the way, the drones that can fly there need also to be secure, period. Identify the problem, identify the areas, and solve the problem, solve the security, and it doesn't matter. Nothing else matters. Let's secure what we need to secure in, in reality, not with a well stupid said. country board. Vic Moss, okay, everyone. Done. Any other shout outs you'd like before we conclude? 
Uh, let's see, DAA, DSPA. If you need to hire a good photographer, <laughs> a good one. No, um, <laughs> mossphotography.biz. Um, <laughs> I love what I do. I've been doing it for 35 years. I have an incredibly supportive wife who actually is with her parents right now. I'm getting texts back and forth. Her elderly parents up in the mountains, um, taking care of them. So I've been batching it for the last week, hence the beer. Um, it just thanks for you guys too. Thanks for what you do. Thanks for giving us a voice. Thanks for giving us a platform. Um, and uh, keep Thanks, doing Vic. what you're doing. We love you. How's that? I love you guys. Too. We'll see, I will see you uh, in San Diego. I will be there, and in Vegas, of uh, course, in September. I'm sure. I'm sure we'll have Vic on probably in a few months because I could see this. <laughs> this is going to continue, and we're going to have to revisit You've this prepare Sadly. 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 <laughs> Forty-five minutes, maybe not. But we'll they- see. I yeah I I don't need a monologue. Just give me a give me a mic and shut me and just I'll we can vomit. do that. We absolutely can <laughs> for next well, time. Thanks, thanks for coming on, Vic. All right, guys, have a great evening. Everybody, fly safe. I cannot be on a podcast and not say fly safe Such as I sign off. Guests, thanks everyone. Thanks to our viewers. Right. Bye bye. We will see you later. Stay on, stay on, stay on, please. Fly at the stream. <laughs>